but the really good ones, the ones that I've worked with or seen or they've shared their data with me, tend to be focused a lot on that improvement in milk fat percentage, gut health, animal health performance. Hi, I'm, I'm Bill Weiss, the host of the Dairy Black Belt uh, podcast. My uh, guest today is Dr. Todd Calloway, University of Georgia, who studied uh, gut microbiology for essentially his whole career. Um, he wrote a, or he was corresponding author on our, on our upcoming review published in Journal Dairy Science on, on covering the topic of probiotics and other, other feed additives along those lines. Uh, in a previous uh, recording, we talked about some introductory material. In this one, we want to talk more about responses that have that have been observed when these products are fed uh, to adult cows. So, Todd, welcome back. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, Bill. What I'd like to start with is kind of a general question, and that is if, if a nutritionist or, or a producer were, was interested in feeding these products, what kind of questions or what should he ask the supplier on, on, on to trying to make the decision, should I include these in my diet? Well, the first one always is, what's my return on investment going to be? You know, let's just be practical about this. And there's some of them who aren't going to be able to give you a return on investment because they just don't know it yet. And that may be okay. But then we'd want to know, all right, what is this product? Is it a probiotic? Is it a prebiotic? Is it a symbiotic or postbiotic? How do you guys think it works and see if it makes sense? I mean, if they're talking about it's going to improve gut health, but you don't have any visible gut health problems and your cows are doing great already, which, you know, most of our farmers are doing pretty good, then, you know, how is this going to benefit my animals? You know, where's my problem? If they're talking about an increase in milk production, then there's a few other questions about how do we think this works? What's it going to do? Which cattle does this work best in? Because not all cattle respond to the addition of any product. And Ken Griswold's the one who did the math with me years ago of looking at, you know, you may have a thousand head, but by the time you get down to not my first calf heifers, only the ones on string, only those in, say, that immediately post-freshening period, you may only have 90 or 100 cattle that will respond to whatever your treatment is. So if you're just looking at bulk tank volume, you're not going to see much difference because you're only dealing with a small fraction. So who do they think this is going to work best for? Who's going to be benefit from mm -hmm. this? And most of the companies have kind of worked a lot of that out themselves. So they, they know the target, uh, I'm going to say target audience more or less. And then right, if you the could good obviously, do. You know, and it, obviously if you could target this product to those animals, if they group or whatever, the return on investment obviously won't be much, much better than if you have to feed it right. to everyone, but only some respond. Yeah. What, what, exactly. what are, uh, when, they, when these are fed to dairy cows, what, what are some of the production responses that have been observed? Well, you know, there'll be, <laughs> there's companies that'll tell you it'll make your cow's hair shiny, their teeth <laughs> straighter, they'll learn to drive the cattle, you'll want them to date your daughter kind of thing. But reality is, for most of these, we see improvements in gut health, reduction in diarrhea. Um, a lot of, our, several of them, not a lot, are targeted at reducing things like hemorrhagic bowel, and they can help reduce that as well and some of that hind gut acidosis problems, as well as ruminal acidosis. But as far as production metrics, a lot of them look at, number one, milk volume, increase in protein yield, and increase in milk fat percentage. And not all of them do this, not all promise the same thing, because again, there's so many variable modes of action and types of these products that we can't throw a blanket statement. The good ones, the ones that I've worked with or seen, or they've shared their data with me, tend to be focused a lot on that improvement in milk fat percentage, gut health, animal health performance, 
that area tends to be a really big production where you can get your cows bred a little earlier. You don't have as many leg problems as you would normally. I'm assuming a lot of this would be, especially the production responses would be mediated by a little bit higher intakes because of either healthier cows or something. Is, is an intake response common on, if they get a production response, does intake usually go up or is, are they more efficient? Well, it's a little bit of both, depending on what the product is. Some of them, their intake will stay the same or drop, and their milk increase goes up, so their efficiency is improved. Others, it appears that it is doing something like providing um, amino, extra amino acids, so you increase their intake the same way you would with all these amino acids. I mean, it's not providing that, but it looks like a similar benefit. It does, you know, because of the big effect uh, on uh, microbes have on fiber digestion, has that been improved or is it, do some of these products actually improve digestibility? Some of the products do. Um, and from what I've seen, it's a lot of your yeast based products that will improve fiber de degradation. And because the yeast have made a lot of vitamins that our fiber degraders need. And that helps stimulate that part of the population in the room and to go ahead and break down that fiber because they've got their special vitamins that they need. Mm -hmm. And, that and would, that's my thinking from what we see. And, you know, if that happens, that should that improve efficiency and intake. So you get kind of a double, exactly. double shot. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a lot of it, you know, that there's things in the diet that we don't realize are lacking for some of these microbes that by adding these compounds we're bringing these what we would call in the old days we called unidentified growth factors yep. and you know magic dust of adding in yeast products real in bacterial culture helps grow bacteria all the time so it makes a lot of sense that it works in the animal as well and let's wrap up here on on you hit on it a little bit but on acidosis it is still a problem in the dairy industry so what are some effects that have been seen on, on with these products and acidosis and acidosis related problems? Well, that's where I think a lot of these benefit our producers because a lot of them will contain compounds like dicarboxylic acids, like malic acid or fumaric acid that cause some of our lactate utilizing bacteria like Salinomonas ruminantium to take up more lactate. They utilize lactate more rapidly. And as they do, as they utilize that lactic acid, they convert it from lactate to propionate. And propionate is glucogenic. It helps the cow have more energy after she's taken that propionate up. So having that, that shift going from lactate, which is a strong acid, to propionate, is going to increase your pH naturally, number one. But also producing more propionate, you get more energy to that animal. And also, as you shift to propionate, you're going to have less methane production as well. And not even touching on that sustainability greenhouse gas portion, that's a that's some of your energy that you've paid for oh, yeah. that's oh, going yeah. out as gas. So you help retain that energy in your cow for her milk production. So really adjusting that ruminal pH is great. And some of the work we've kind of played with with Lance Baumgard and, you know, Lance is one of the most brilliant minds floating around is trying to figure out what's going on in that hindgut acidosis. And I think if we can pass some of these products through into that hindgut, we may be able to help combat some of that as well. At a sale, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M. Visit MilkPay.com to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids. And to learn how Smart Amine M is the product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, component levels, and the lifetime performance of their herds. Well, we're running out of time, so this will have to be quick. But on, on hindgut acidosis, um, what are some of the effects of, uh, that, that we see with that problem? Well, with that hindgut acidosis, um, 
you, know, you see that low pH in the feces, they tend to have a lot more diarrhea because you've got so much osmotic shot or osmotic compounds in the feces that pulls water out of the animal. You're not getting that hindgut degradation of any of your fiber at all that's getting down there and some of your other nutrients continue through. So you're losing a lot of your nutrients just because you've got a faster flow rate out of that hindgut alone. And it's just a much less hospitable microbial environment. And then you start seeing things like hemorrhagic bowel that, you know, it's not necessarily related to acidosis, but it sure as heck looks a lot like acidosis in a lot of ways in the hindgut. Great. This has been, uh, I've learned a lot. Thanks for, for joining us. That's no, my pleasure, Bill.